always from the heart of the city and now on demand 24 7 on the chfi website this is the soundtrack to accompany another kind of ride one not so thrilling as yesterday's and i'm don jackson around the world on the internet jim carrey in usa today some years back said i challenge anybody in their darkest moment to write what they are grateful for even stupid things like green grass or a friendly conversation with somebody on the elevator you start to realize how rich you are it's amazing who you might meet on an elevator this hour with lovers and other strangers from iTunes and chfi.com John Lennon who lived in the Dakota in New York City watching the wheels and hauling oats and she's gone I'm Don Jackson with lovers and other strangers from iTunes and chfi.com there was a movie some years back called the shaft about a haunted elevator lots of horror movies have utilized the cramped confined space as a backdrop think of the many scenes you've seen in elevators in the movies from the grand old black and white films to the hack and slash films of today one specialty television network even shot a scene from one of their promos in an elevator I have to ride a few elevators to get to and from these studios every day but they're relatively short rides up and down one of the most exhilarating elevator rides in the city is the one up the side of the CN Tower when it emerges into the sunlight you truly get a sense of how high you are and how fast you're getting to the top many luxury hotels feature glass covered elevators with either exterior views of the cityscape or the atrium below supposedly it was on August 5th 1811 that the inventor of the elevator was born this hour every segment has an elevator yesterday we rode a roller coaster together today I hope you enjoy a slower ride with lovers and other strangers from iTunes and chfi.com Avril Lavigne and keep holding on and Kelly Clarkson and breakaway I'm Don Jackson with lovers and other strangers from iTunes and chfi.com there are some people who will do anything to avoid an elevator if they can for fear that it might get stuck between floors if you remember back to the great blackout when the power went down some people were stuck inside elevators in high-rises around the city for hours I wonder if they now opt to climb stairs this was included in the social studies column in the Globe and Mail some time back and I quote during the Northeast blackout Betty Lloyd of Detroit spent almost 19 hours alone and trapped in an old elevator before firefighters rescued her hours earlier reports the Associated Press Lloyd had twice thought she was about to be rescued when she talked with men who had heard her pleas and had promised to get help they never returned and she said she'd like to know what happened Unquote. from the Associated Press and the Globe and Mail to many just the thought of this happening would be a nightmare so let me pose the question to you have you ever been stuck between floors in a darkened elevator if not I think that the question is steeped in enough rich imagery that you can't imagine what it would be like 
One can easily understand why panic might ensue if the elevator grinds its way to a sudden stop. I once had a friend who refused to ride elevators for fear of that very thing happening. She would climb the stairs no matter the number of floors. To be sure, the incident might start off with only a few discontented sighs. But a lack of air and body heat can quickly change the mood inside that confined space. To keep panic from welling up to the surface, someone inside would have to exert some kind of authority, try to take command of the situation. Just that fact would help alleviate some of the tension that would rise as fast as the inside temperature. There is a television commercial playing right now that highlights a few bad ideas. Imagine an elevator door opening and finding the car filled with people wrapped only in towels and a sauna inside that small enclosed space. That was one of the bad ideas featured. The look on the actress's face says it all as she steps into that elevator. Back in the mid-90s, a couple of famous people were reminded how close they once were. We'll take a ride with them shortly. With lovers and other strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com. The Drifters getting up on the roof, the Eagles in the Hotel California, and the Guess Who and Sour Sweet. Lovers and other strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com. On April 26, 1995, Oscar winner Tommy Lee Jones and the then Vice President of the United States, Al Gore, were trapped in an elevator at the Four Seasons Hotel in Houston. The Associated Press learned the details of the story through a spokesman for the Vice President. Both Gore and Jones, along with a security detail, were not going anywhere fast for about 20 to 30 minutes until they could be rescued. But it wasn't the first time these two shared rather close quarters. You see, the vice president and the movie star used to be college roommates at Harvard. So they knew what it was like to be together in a small space. Lovers and other strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com. Josh Groban and You Raise Me Up, and Elton John going up to the roof as well in your song. Lovers and other strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com. I'm Don Jackson. This was sent to me via email quite some time ago. The 92-year-old, petite, well-poised mother-in-law of my best friend, who is fully dressed each morning by 8 o'clock, with her hair fashionably coiffed and makeup perfectly applied, even though she is legally blind, moved to a nursing home today. Her husband of 70 years recently passed away, making the move necessary. Maureen is the most lovely, gracious, dignified woman that I have ever had the pleasure of meeting. While I have never aspired to attain her depth of wisdom, I do pray that I will learn from her vast experience. After many hours of waiting patiently in the lobby of the nursing home, she smiled sweetly when told her room was ready. As she maneuvered her walker to the elevator, I provided a visual description of her tiny room, including the eyelet sheets that had been hung on her window. I love it, she stated, with the enthusiasm of an eight-year-old having just been presented with a new puppy. You haven't even seen the room. Just wait. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with it, she replied. Happiness is something you decide on ahead of time. Whether I like my room or not doesn't depend on how furniture is arranged. It's how I arrange my mind. 
I already decided to love it. It's a decision I make every morning when I wake up. I have a choice. I can spend the day in bed recounting the difficulty I have with the parts of my body that no longer work. Or get out of bed and be thankful for the ones that do. Each day is a gift, and as long as my eyes open, I'll focus on the new day and all the happy memories I've stored away just for this time in my life. Old age is like a bank account. You withdraw from it what you've put in. Unquote. Lovers and other strangers. From iTunes and CHFI.com. Jan Arden with Jackson Brown, Unloved, and Sarah McLaughlin with Angel. I'm Don Jackson with Lovers and Other Strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com. One final thought this hour. Jane Goodsell from Press Associates and quoted in the Points to Ponder column of the April 98 Reader's Digest magazine said... And I quote, Anonymity is a stern test of character. When we feel faceless and unidentified, it is temptingly easy to do things we otherwise wouldn't. Scooting into parking places that someone has staked out. Elbowing our way out of elevators without saying, excuse me. Hanging up the phone instead of explaining that we dialed the wrong number. Living habits might undergo a renaissance if we wore name tags all the time. An interesting thought from Jane Goodsell from Press Associates concerning anonymity. While the doors are just about to open on the ground floor, I hope the ride was uneventful. Lovers and Other Strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com Good night, sweet dreams. I'm Don Jackson.